Today we're going to be talking about psychology as a profession. Now I understand that it's still very early on in the year. Some of you are very interested in psychology already. Some of you are just here because of the social studies requirement. But I would like to ask that you keep an open mind. You'll be surprised how many people at the end of the year enjoy this class enough to want to minor in psychology in the future or major in psychology. So be open to a study of psychology in the future. All right, so the first thing that we have to define is what is a psychologist? Now I know this term can be thrown around pretty loosely, but it actually has a pretty specific definition. So a psychologist is a professional with a PhD and specialized training in one or more areas of psychology. So a PhD, that's the same thing as saying someone has a doctorate. And what we're going to see in this lesson is that there are a lot of areas of psychology. The next thing that we have to talk about is what is the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist? So the difference is that a psychiatrist is a medical doctor. So they have to go to med school just like other doctors and they're able to prescribe medication and operate on patients and the psychologist cannot prescribe medication. So that's going to be the big difference. Alright, so next we're going to look at some careers in psychology. You're going to be doing an assignment called Psychology as a Profession where you're going to be looking into one of the subfields of psychology and deciding if you had to choose which one might you be interested in. So what you're going to see is that psychology can prepare you for many different career opportunities. So one of the big misconceptions is that you have to go to graduate school in order to find a job with a bachelor's degree in psychology, but that's not true. There are opportunities to work with a psychology degree just a bachelor's degree. So say you want to work in human services, you could do nonprofit work, that type of thing. Um, research, there's a lot of opportunities for that because you have experience with working with statistics and performing experiments and things like that. You can see other areas you can work in as well. Next we're looking at some career samples. So we can see with just a bachelor's degree in psychology things like crisis management, community relations, marketing research, you can work in student affairs, sales, real estate, so a lot of different options on this slide. Next I want to talk to you quickly just about the difference between clinical and counseling psychology. So most states are going to be require we're going to require a PhD in order to be a clinical or counseling psychologist. And of the PhDs in psychology, half of them are in clinical and counseling psychology. Now in order to operate one's own practice or work in a university setting, teaching, conducting research, that type of thing, PhDs are going to be required. So a clinical psychologist, this is someone who is going to assess, so formally diagnose people with psychological disorders. Um, there are different subfields in psychology that have to have a PhD. They're going to be working in private offices, mental hospitals, prisons, clinics, things like that. Next, a counseling psychologist is going to uh, they're going to help people recognize their strengths and help them cope with personal, family, marital problems. So just in general, adjust to life's challenges. These are going to usually work in their own offices, in schools, and in industrial firms, that type of thing. Alright, so now on to some subfields of psychology. What you're going to see is that Psychology is a very broad field, and there are a lot of different specific subfields. 
or specialized areas where a person can work in psychology. And what I want you to notice too is that there's a lot of overlap between the approaches, the perspectives that we've been studying and what type of psychologist people can become. So the first is cognitive psychology. So this is going to be someone that's studying perception, thinking, memory, and the way this lesson is studied is, is structured is it shows you what type of questions that they might study. So how do people learn, how do they understand language, that type of thing. So cognitive psychology. And as we're going through this lesson, I want you to keep in mind what's a subfield that you might be interested in. I just kind of took the highlights. This isn't all of them by any means, uh, but just some of the more popular ones. Next, we have developmental psychology. So this is going to be the study of development from birth to death. And you can see some of the research questions that they might work with. So um, some other questions, you know, how do people deal with aging parents? What are the effects of gender roles and stereotypes? How do those affect mood? What are the effects of daily stress? Things like that. Next we have the ergonomic and human factor psychology. So these are going to conduct research on how people work best with machines. When I saw this presentation, I actually met someone who was an ergonomic psychologist and they were working to develop a computer game and they were working with that developer to make the keystrokes as easy as possible so that you, there wouldn't be too much hand movement, that type of thing. So some other questions, you know, how can a computer be designed to prevent fatigue and eye strain? How can we arrange an assembly line in the most efficient way possible? They often help design products that will fit people's needs. So for example, developing an effective gas pump that has the buttons and everything in a good place. That ha um, Another example, they might help with packaging. Like how can we package an iPod so that it's appealing and accessible? Next we have health psychology. This is actually a trendy subfield right now and they're going to work with things like helping kids with diabetes take their medication, why don't some people follow medical advice, how can we find ways to control pain, how can we get people to listen to their doctor, that type of thing. Next, industrial and organizational psychology, they're going to be really focused on the workplace. So these are people that are usually hired to, in a company to figure out how can we select the best employees, how can we promote our company, how can we best train our employees, how can we increase worker motivation, how can we increase worker satisfaction, that type of thing. Next we have school psychology. I know that it can be really tempting to confuse this with a guidance counselor, but this is actually different. So school psychologists are going to work to come up with interventions. So for example, if someone has been diagnosed with a learning disability or ADHD or difficulty with social skills, they're going to help define interventions for those specific problems. Next we have a public interest psychology or community psychology. So these are people that are going to address social and organizational problems within the community. So an example of something that they might do is how can we develop a program to teach the elderly in the, com in the community how to use computers? How can we create programs to teach people skills that they need for the workforce? That type of thing. So they're trying to identify a problem in the community and come up with a solution on how it can be addressed. Next we have sports psychology. I know that a lot of the a lot of people are usually interested in this subfield. And what we see is they are going to help athletes 
deal with anxiety, deal with that fear of failure that can often accompany competition. They're going to use techniques like visualization and relaxation to help athletes reduce anxiety to get their attention focused. My sister-in-law is a college softball player and they do meet with sports psychologists. That's part of what the university provides for them. All right, so there's a lot more careers in psychology. We were just barely scratching the surface. And so there are a couple of websites that I want to show you. And we're going to be working with these more in class tomorrow, but if you want to get a head start looking at potential careers, the first one is an APA website. So let me go ahead and pause this and I'll pull that up for us to look at together. So here's the first page that sh shows some of the subfields in psychology and you can see that it just gives a brief overview of what this subfield does and it talks a little bit about what type of thing they might research. The second website that I wanted to walk you through is divisions of the APA. So there's 54 divisions of the American Psychological Association and what you can do is you can click on a specific area let's look at developmental psychology and it will tell you what type of research they do what type of questions they answer and then you can actually click and read more about each subfield so again take some time if you'd like to get a jump start and look through these but we are going to take time in class and look at these things together. So, all right. Have a good night.